Recovers that near a steal from San Makers split a pair of games at home over the weekend. Uh, they, they lost on Wednesday night to Nebraska 71-64, but came back on Saturday with a 75-56 win over Minnesota. Purdue now 13-6 overall, 4-5 and five in the Big Ten, and heads to the road this week for a couple of top 25 matchups. On Thursday night, it's Purdue at number 22, Illinois. That'll be an 8 o'clock Eastern time tip. And then Sunday, the Boilermakers travel to Columbus to take on the second-ranked and currently unbeaten Ohio State Buckeyes. That game will tip off at 1 o'clock. Good evening, everybody, from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette. It is the Katie Gerald Show. We'll be talking Boilermaker basketball with the head coach up until the top of the hour. We're on Facebook on the Purdue Athletics site. So if you'd like to let us know where you're watching from and if you have any questions, please do that. A little bit later on in the show, we'll be talking with Caitlin Harper. She is our graduate transfer from Heartland, Wisconsin, and Cal Poly. She's going to talk about her transition to the Big Ten. But when we come back, we'll have the head coach. It's the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Recovers that near a steal from Sam Hybe. Harden from deep. She sinks it. Harper with a shot from deep. She gets it. Isabel Bourne with the inbound. Sam Hybe nearly clipped by Cassidy Harden. A fast break that doesn't connect. Maddie Crow going to get an offensive foul. Three to shoot. Ellis from three. She connects. Abby Ellis. Pass out to Hybe. That ball gets pushed in, and now Abby Ellis working on transition. Ava Learn with the fast break points. Three ball has not been too kind to the Huskers today. They're three for 13 now. Jayla Smith outside the arc. She connects. She's played fantastic defense. Another thing, you go back and watch the tape against Northwestern. Not only did she have 24 points and perfect 7-for-7 seven seven from the free throw line, she was making the tough defensive play. She took the charges in the paint. She was guarding them close outside the arc. Jayla Smith gets the fresh 20. Abby Ellis, she's hot! Under a minute left in this third quarter. Kicked out to Harden. She's going deep and sinks it. Shot clock at nine. Terry kicks it out to the shoulder. Smith driving in herself. Will put up a floater and get it off the star. She'll do a step back. Holds up. Back to Terry. 40 seconds on the clock. Terry from deep. Drills it. Boilers back within a possession. to the Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Joined by the head coach, Katie. Usually I make it to the first commercial break before the first mistake, but not tonight. Uh, Caitlin Harper from Cal Baptist. Abby Ellis is from Cal Poly. We'll get those straight. I know yeah. they're from out west somewhere, but I know mom and dad are probably watching, so I want to make sure that they've got the right school. No doubt. No right. doubt. Well, wherever she's from, we're glad she's with us. Before we talk, can we just get all the football stuff? Because I know you I, want to talk about I just figured Chiefs. that's why you made the, the first mistake well, yeah, in the first segment. Yeah, I'm Still all, I'm, heartbroken I'm all, from heart last night. You know, uh, we were talking during the break. Uh, obviously, if, if you've been following along, Katie's a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. And uh, we laid about as big as an egg mm. in a playoff game as you can, and you, you know, you look, and, and certainly Cincinnati was a better team, but you look what's happened to Buffalo in the last year. You had a mass shooting at a, at a supermarket downtown. Uh, you had a blizzard that killed almost 50 people. Uh, you had on New Year's Eve a house fire that killed five kids ages 2 to 10, and then two days later you almost had a player die on the field. Yeah. That city's been through a lot. The city, mean, the team means a lot to that city, and I, I wanted it for Buffalo, and we'll have other seasons, but... Uh, Good luck to the Chiefs. It's good to see that we're going to have at least one Boilermaker in the Super Bowl because George Karloftis and Marcus Bailey, somebody's going to go to the Super Bowl, so we get to keep that Purdue string going. Yeah, it's a uh, gosh, but, you know, you, you, I didn't know all of that for Buffalo, right? Like, yeah. my heart aches for the city, and 
um, just whatever they what all they went through with Demar and um, having to play a, a football game with all that is is a lot. And like you said, Cincinnati was was the better team that day and probably a lot easier to take from a football fan standpoint than, yes. than the heartbreaker last year in Kansas City. Thir- 13 seconds. Yeah, Ooh. we still have those 13 seconds. But tough city. They'll be back. Uh, we'll see. Uh, let's talk basketball. Your team had to be tough because it was a disappointing loss. Probably as disappointed, I think, as we've been in a while on Wednesday night because it was a game against Nebraska. You looked going into the fourth quarter like he had under control, and then all of a sudden all the things you'd done well for three quarters went away. Yeah. Um, I was actually talking to someone on the way here, and I think last week we played seven quarters of really good basketball, yep. um, and then that one quarter just kind of bit us in the butt. and. Um, like you said, everything we did well for three quarters, we didn't do well, and everything we were preventing Nebraska from doing, um, they stepped up and, and, and did it well in the fourth quarter. And um, when it's winning time, we've got to do better. Um, and I thought we, uh, you know, it, 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 it crushed us. It, it crushed me. And, and I, you know, Thursday was a, a different kind of practice for us. And, and Friday, this group kind of gave me some life back. And Saturday, then they, they crushed me again to shoot around. It wasn't great, but uh, <laughs> come 40 minutes against Minnesota, they put together. You know, it's amazing. Sports sometimes can both thrill us and kill us. Um, you had a 25-point third quarter where you're moving the ball around, but I thought the last possession of your third quarter, you were up eight and you had the basketball, and we wound up getting a really poor shot at the end of that shot clock, and that seemed to carry over and go into the fourth quarter because the offense just didn't move at all. Yeah, we didn't we didn't execute there on that, on that play, and then to start the fourth quarter, we get a layup in the rim, and we miss it. Um, we actually get a stop, and then Jayla drives and drop, jump, drops it off. We miss another layup. So mm-hmm. you think about the the last possession of the third quarter, those two missed layups. So you could easily be up 12, 14 um, with about nine minutes sure. to go, and maybe it changes. Maybe right. it doesn't. Maybe it changes. Um, but uh, give Nebraska credit. They they made the plays. I thought Markowski just kind of put them on the back down the stretch, and um, Izzy Bourne hits a huge three, and yep. then Sam Hybe was just magnificent. Yeah, I, you know, Markowski scored those 12 points in the fourth quarter, but I thought it was the two threes that their other players mm-hmm. hit, their normal role players, and the time that they hit them. I think one was you were up maybe five or four, and that cut it to one. And then when they were up one, they hit one to make it a four-point game. Yeah, I uh, I don't get too upset with officials, but I did that time. We uh, I think we score a layup, and I, I screamed to call timeout because I feel like we needed to, mm-hmm. to get our defense a set. Um, they drive, Abby falls down, and they hit a three. Right. We have inbounded the ball, and Amy Williams calls timeout, and he gave it, and she gave it to her. So like, there we were. Like I was so I was super frustrated because I was he didn't hear me or his eyes weren't on me to give us a timeout. Maybe we get our defense to set, we change our rotations. Maybe that play doesn't happen, and then it does, and then they get the timeout. And and the one we're down by one, we let the kid escape from a, a post and skip pass and. Um, their, their transfer guard from South Dakota knocks a big one down. Yeah, I thought she was big. She had missed a, a lot of practice that week because she had had an illness, and I thought she came off the bench and really gave them a lot, 15 points, and hit some big baskets against you. Yeah, we, uh, we couldn't stop her. Couldn't keep her out of the paint. Good news is there's always a tomorrow in athletics, and you had your tomorrow on Saturday. We'll talk about the win over Minnesota when we come back. It's the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union and the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Smith, that back to Waltman. And Layton's going to get another opportunity for a three, and she knocks it down. Such a tough player standing only at 5-6. But Waltman down low, she'll get it to go. Step through, up and under, won't go, but she gets the offensive rebound. Petrie again, spinning, layup, and it goes down. Braun finds Sinano for the mid-range jumper. It won't go, and Ava Learn, who just subbed in, will get the rebound. Ellis pushing, finds Harden for history. For the answer. Won't go, but Sinano gets the rebound, blocked by Smith. A little bit too much excitement on the last pass. <laughs> Would have been really cool if Ava Learn was able to uh, slam it down. But Cassidy Harden will knock down the three. Petrie looking to spark some offense. Gives it over to Jayla Smith, who nails the floater. Back in the game for the Golden Gophers. Crossing over on Petrie and swatted out of bounds by the long reach. 
And Minnesota trying to get one more shot off before the quarter ends. 4.2 seconds to go. Battle, inbound. The shot is blocked by Learn, and with no seconds left. And that's a much needed three for Minnesota. Now let's see if they can force a miss or a turnover and try and close this gap even more. Petrie looks to answer, and she answers. And it won't go. David, we've seen an abundance of long twos from Minnesota as Cassidy Harden currently has it. Back over to Harden. Harden again. Heat check goes down for Harden. Needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Boilermakers with a couple of top 25 matchups. There are two great games tonight. One is already underway, Iowa and Ohio State. And looking at it, it looks like defense is optional. They're still in the first quarter, 23-21, Iowa on top. So it looks like that one's going to be maybe the first 80 or 90 tonight. Yeah, you would imagine with both of those teams playing, that's pretty much the makeup of, of who they are. All right, then you cut, take on a Minnesota team Saturday, probably the youngest team, along with Wisconsin in the Big Ten. And with a team like that, you never know what kind of effort they're going to have. And I'm sure Lindsey Whalen's going through the highs and lows of having a young basketball team. How did you think your team responded on Saturday? Yeah, like I said, well, once game time, you know, once tip, I thought the, the ball moved exceptionally well for us. Um, I, we missed some shots uh, in the first quarter, but the ball moved well. Our energy was great on the offensive end. Our, we had great player movement, and then the the intensity and the effort on the defensive end was, was a lot different than what we saw on Wednesday. Um, so we're really proud of our group for responding. Um, like you said, you just never know which way it's going to go. Yeah. And sometimes you feel like you're on a roller coaster. Um, but when, when, when we play well and we play like we did, especially in that first 20 minutes, I, I, I mean, you talk about Iowa, Mich or Iowa and Ohio State, I feel like we can play with them. I'm not saying we're going to beat them, but um, I feel like we can play with them and, and we're, we're just as talented. Um, and we always talk about, like, toughness and – you know, playing good, solid basketball, like the basketball gods, they, they like that and they appreciate that. And, and then there in the first half, the ball went through the hoop. Uh, let's look at uh, Facebook tonight before we talk more about the Minnesota game. John in Pennsylvania checking in, Ira in Wisconsin. Uh, Brianne, proud of the effort on Saturday, says we're behind you and support you all no matter what. And we know that from Brianne. Uh, John does have a question. Uh, do you believe in analytics? Do you rely on hunches or both? And how do you determine what your starting lineup is going to be from game to game? <laughs> uh, the last one is uh, a little tricky. I think that's more gut. Dartboard? Um, <laughs> yeah, dart, uh, fill it in a, you know, pull it, pull it out of a hat kind of thing. Just trying to find the right group to start games. Um, it's, it's been a challenge for us. And, you know, I like the way that group started. Uh, I know we didn't score it well, but, like, that group just had a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of ball movement that the, the the ball movement, the player movement, the start of the, the, the first quarter the other day was really good. Um, so we'll probably stick stick with that mm -hmm. um, against Illinois. And then well, analytics, yeah, I, I would – I mean, obviously I pay attention to it. We pay attention to them. Um, like we know half of Genesis Bryant's or shots are three-point sh three point attempts. She's 15 of 43 from the mid-range. Mm -hmm. She's 37 of 60 inside the paint. So, like, those play, like, what, does she want to go right? Does she want to go left? What are, what are the chances? And so we, we play into all those things. Um, but in the moment, I, I think I'm more of a gut, this feels right kind of kind of coach. And uh, I think that's kind of how I was as a player. And uh, it's kind of just translated into how I how I try to coach games too. I thought one of the more impressive things about the Minnesota game was the balance. And look at the balance in scoring. You had four players in double figures. Everybody had at least one rebound. And I think everybody except one person had at least one assist. So they were all sharing the ball. They were all going after the ball on the boards. And they were all scoring. Yeah, and I, I know, and you look at the final stat sheet, Minnesota has 17 offensive rebounds. I think they had four in the first half. And, you know, for the most part, we did a really good job of keeping their big off the glass. Um, and then down the stretch, it was just, they just, you know, they just kept shooting it poorly and kept yeah. going to get it. So a little little misleading there, um, you know. But uh, for the most part, we did, we did like you said, we did a good job. Um, I liked the I liked how we, we put two in at a time. And so two fresh kids and, and um, you know, just kind of rotated that like that in the, throughout that game. And, um, 
you know, sometimes kids get in foul trouble and, and you make adjustments. Um, Caitlin picks up two quick fouls, so Ricky's got to go in there a little bit earlier. Um, but, you know, I think it, what it did is it took a lot of pressure off of Ricky, mm-hmm. you know, just, hey, I know Caitlin's over there with two fouls. I've got to just hoop, and, and Ricky had a, a heck of a game for us. You know, one player that we've talked about in the last year and a half, we've seen glimpses, and the glimpses seem like they're getting more – they're getting longer is Jayla Smith. Mm-hmm. Jayla started to score in double figures consistently – and she gives you that athleticism that you really need at the guard position. Yeah, I think, what are we at, five games in a row? She's in double figures. And um, the, the crossover finish she had yeah. in the, late in the, Over in the game. Over her head. Yeah, that was, that was silly. And uh, the, I think she, she drove and bounced it off, uh, I think, to Caitlin in transition. Jayla just does some things. You're like, man. And then she does some things. You're like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she's, uh, she's coming along. And. Um, you know, just the more and more she gets comfortable and, and confident, and like she, you can just see she's playing really, really confident right now. All right, we'll have one more segment with the coach, and then we'll bring Caitlin Harper up. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Determination, and, you know, you can just see, I mean, she has a swagger about her that is so attractive to these kids nowadays in the recruiting and the style. She's a competitor, um, and she still has games. She wears cool shoes. You know, she's just she's in the recruiting class that she's bringing in. She's continuing to build, and, um, and those kids play with that. You see them play with that competitive spirit, and, and, that's, and she coaches that way, and and they're, they're just a, re- a reflection of who she embod- what she embodies every day. And, um, and it's, you know, I'm grateful that, that she's in that position leading this team. And, uh, and um, it's, it's showing, it's paying off. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open! Got it! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales! Holy Toledo! Steps away, Coleman football! They've got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach! Hope the year! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue! For nearly a century, ross Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Boilermakers and the Fighting Illini on Thursday. That'll be an 8 o'clock tip Eastern time. We'll have it at 745. Uh, the weather has dictated a little change in the travel plan. It's going to have to go to Champaign a little early this week. Yeah. Um, obviously, we, you know, just get the kids out of class on Wednesday, but they'll have some study tables just for us to get there. The, the best and safest way for us to get there is to leave tomorrow night before the storm hits, even over in Champaign. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make adjustments. We'll practice over there and uh, see, what, see what can happen. And then let it snow, let it snow. Maybe it'll keep the crowd down a little bit at the State that, Farm that Center. That actually would Thursday be really night. good. I think their, their crowds have been pretty yeah, solid have. here. Even S- Speaking of crowds, 5,000-plus at Mackey on Saturday. A great crowd then. We'd like to see about double that for the next home game against Indiana. Yeah, that would, that would be something. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great crowd. The student section was great, and then everybody else just kind of pil- pil- um, piled on. Um, I think I read that was the third largest crowd since mm-hmm. I've been here. So yeah. um, obviously, like you said, back in the day, like that's what, that was it, what it was on a consistent basis. And we talk about it all the time. Like our product has to be what we did on mm-hmm. Saturday to make it entertaining to come, right? Like we have to be able to play that way consistently to, to make it worth someone's time to, to get out of the house on a Saturday or Sunday to, to come watch us hoop. And, um, 
hopefully that number is doubled um, on February 5th. Uh, you know there are going to be a lot of people in red coming up the interstate because they've got a big following now with Terry Morin down there. So we need to have a lot of Boilermaker fans in the stands for that one. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a Boilermaker to get it right down there, right? That's right. Uh, Rashonda Jones is the uh, one of the Max Preps National Player of the Year watch list candidates. Uh, we've talked a little bit, I think, last week about your recruits, but uh, Rashonda getting some attention up there mm -hmm. in South Bend. Yeah, Spider has just been... She's been really special for, for her, her high school team, and um, she's been even more special in their big games. I think they're sitting there undefeated um, going into to sectionals next week. But, um, yeah, I'm the, you guys, y'all are going to absolutely adore this kid. Um, it's 94 feet. It's all effort. It's pure effort, crazy skill. Um, yeah, she's going she's gonna to be special. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Illinois and Ohio State, your next two opponents coming up. But let's talk about the Boilermakers and what uh, what's happened here in the last few games. And we've talked about the balance scoring. Jayla Smith has come up and scored. And, uh, you know, getting some consistent play and some energy off the bench is really important because uh, you've got a nine-player rotation, and you can't count on all five players starting the game to have it every night. You got to have somebody coming off the bench to give you some energy. Yeah, and Jayla has – obviously, we, we put her in that starting spot and um – you know, just her mind for to, to and not, not that she did anything to, to lose that spot, but it, she's so good coming off the bench because she kind of allows the game to to see the game um, before she gets in there. And she's just been she's been really good. And honestly, even before that, um, it's been the first half where she struggled in the second half where she just kind of has settled into, you know, to her, her kind of her niche there in the second half of games. And we talked about it and, and she's just been really, really good, confident. Like that's just, um, so she's been solid off the bench. Obviously Ricky, Ricky's been Ricky and, um, you know, then, and then bringing Mads off the bench, kind of that, that calming influence there and, um, someone who can kind of get Jayla and, you know, Jayla the ball in the right spots and, and really help Ricky out on the court. We've got some milestones. Janae Terry hit 500 career assists this last week. Caitlin Harper needs three points to get to 1,500. Laisha Petrie's closing in on 2,000. You know, the records are a little bit different, and they're going to be different going mm -hmm. forward because you're going to have this spike here in the middle where some kids are playing five or six years. But numbers are numbers, and your kids are, are they're producing. Yeah, they are. I mean, obviously, this is Laisha's fifth year. Um, I, you know, this is Janae's fourth year. So 500 mm -hmm. assists in 400 in four years, and uh, you know this is Kaylin's fourth year playing ball. So um, just that's a lot of points, um, you know, and it's really really cool to to be a part of. You talk about three kids that um, that that we brought from the portal that have just bought into the black and gold, and I just adore coaching them. Cassidy Harden is one three-pointer away from moving into the top five on the all-time three-point list. Dominique Odin is next, and. Uh, you know, when Cassidy Harden shoots the basketball, you become a lot tougher to defend. Yeah, when she shoots it well, um, she spaces the floor for us and uh, gives some people some room to operate. And um, I think she hit what four the other night yep. in Minnesota, and just got to get her to get her feet set. And um, you know, she's she was you know she lost her confidence for a little bit. We got in the gym like, hey, like this is what I, this is what we do your whole life. This is this is have fun with it. Like there's no pressure for you. And what's, what's the great about Cass and, and not so great is that she was taking it so personal that she was letting her team down because she wasn't making shots and because she just, she wore it and she carried it. And um, so we just got in the gym, like, Hey, who cares? Like smile when you shoot it, like goes in great. Like if not, we got to get a stop on the other end and just relaxed her a little bit. And I thought when, when we decided to start her the other night or the other afternoon, I thought she, she embraced it and, and was big time for her ball club. All right, we're going to give the coach a break. When we come back, we'll have the pride of Heartland, Wisconsin. Caitlin Harper will be joining us. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Recovers that near steal from Sam Hybe. Harden from deep. She sinks it. Harper with a shot from deep. She gets it. Isabel Bourne with the inbound. Sam Hybe nearly clipped by Cassidy Harden. A fast break that doesn't connect. Maddie Crow going to get an offensive foul. Three to shoot. Ellis from three. She connects. Abby Ellis. Pass out to Hybe. That ball gets pushed in, and now Abby Ellis working on transition. Ava Learn with the fast break points. 
three ball has not been too kind to the Huskers today. They're three for 13 now. Jayla Smith outside the arc, she connects. She's played fantastic defense. Another thing, you go back and watch the tape against Northwestern, not only did she have 24 points and perfect seven for seven from the free throw line, she was making the tough defensive play. She took the charges in the paint. She was guarding them close outside the arc. Jayla Smith gets the fresh 20. Abby Ellis, she's hot! Under a minute left in this third quarter. Kicked out to Harden. She's going deep and sinks it! Shot clock at nine. Terry kicks it out to the shoulder. Smith driving in herself. Will put up a floater and get it off the star. She'll do a step back, holds up, back to Terry. 40 seconds on the clock. Terry from deep, drills it! Spoilers back within a possession. You're listening to the Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Lafayette Limo, family owned, women owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo. Proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. And as promised, we are joined by Caitlin Harper. She is a graduate student uh, from Cal Baptist University. Let's get yes. that uh, correct. I know that your mom and dad probably tuning in tonight on Facebook. I got a chance to meet Dale and Rhonda at the Northwestern game and told them what a great job they did raising their daughter. And happy that you're here. Are you happy that you're yeah. here? Did you make the right choice to come to Purdue? I did. I definitely did. Let's talk about your basketball days growing up in Heartland, Wisconsin, which is right outside of Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you go all the way out to Riverside, California to play college basketball at Cal Baptist? Yeah, you know, so my club coach had a connection to the coach out at Cal Baptist, um, and they were pretty close friends. And so he kind of started talking to me, was interested in me, and, you know, I at first heard California, like, that's way too far. Like, there's no way I'm going there. And my dad was like, let's just take a visit. Like, let's go see what it's like. If anything, it's a free trip to California. And I was there like, all right, sure. So we went and immediately, like, I met the team, I met the coaches, and I was like, I'm coming here. And I think it was kind of a big jump for me to, you know, go across the country, but one of the best things I've done for yeah, sure. Yeah, a little different place, Milwaukee to, to Los Angeles. A little bit different culture out there. A little bit, yep. <laughs> Your dad was a college basketball player at Bemidji State. How did yeah. that influence what you did and how, when you started basketball growing up? Well, I started very young. <laughs> um, I think he was kind of one of those parents where it's like as soon as you're born, you have a ball in your hand. Um, but, you know, he was my coach um, until I got to high school. And so he just was always working with me um, and kind of, you know, helped me grow up in basketball and be ready for high school and be ready for college. Um, and so it was just cool to have someone, you know, as a parent who, like, wants the best for you but also has been in those shoes and knows kind of the way of college basketball. So you wind up playing at uh, Cal Baptist, played some of your freshman year. You were injured your second season, but then things really started to change in your third year. Uh, you were the WAC tournament MVP. You were on the WNIT all-region team. And then you really exploded last year. She was the WAC player of the year last year and, more importantly, a COSIDA All-American. That is academics and athletics. You're getting it done in both places. So congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. How was that balance? How, how difficult has it been? And sometimes we take for granted, you know, the student-athlete part. The student comes first, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's just always important to remember, like, you're there to get a degree, um, but you're also there to play basketball and compete. Um, and I think just our program did a good job of really focusing on the academic part. Um, and obviously, a lot of that was through COVID. So that was a whole other thing we kind of had to navigate. But um, our coaches really stressed, you know, the importance of keeping our grades up and really involving ourselves with our academics. So you have a great season, and you graduate. You've got your undergraduate degree in mm -hmm. what, what was your major there? I have a major in accounting and a minor in finance. Okay. And then you decide to enter this magical place we call the portal. Uh, yeah. What was that decision like, and, and how did you decide to come to West Lafayette coming out of the portal? Um, the portal's kind of scary <laughs> because you go in and you don't really know what you're going to get. Um, and it, it can be a little bit overwhelming, um, but I knew kind of what I was looking for. 
um, and kind of where I was looking um, at. And, you know, right when I got on the call with um, Coach and the rest of the staff, like, I just knew right away. I told my parents. We came on a visit, and especially after the visit, I was like, this is where I want to be. Like, this is the place for me. And it's just a good feeling when you, when you have that and you get to meet everyone around you. Um, and they just make you feel like you're already at home. I would imagine, too, it's a little bit easier on mom and dad who live right, right outside of Milwaukee to get down about three, four hours to see you play here yeah. in West Lafayette. Yeah, they come a lot. They love driving down here. Um, obviously, in California, they didn't get to come out as much. It would be a little bit longer trip, but every chance they get, they're out probably every home game. Um, they even travel a little bit to places in the Big Ten, but, yeah, they love being here. All right, we're going to talk more with Caitlin after this. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Uh, Smith, that back to Waltman. And Layton's going to get another opportunity for a three, and she knocks it down. Such a tough player standing only at 5'6". But Waltman down low, she'll get it to go. Step through, up and under, won't go, but she gets the offensive rebound. Petrie again, spinning, layup, and it goes down. Braun finds Sinano for the mid-range jumper. It won't go, and Ava Learn, who just subbed in, will get the rebound. Ellis pushing, finds Harden for history. For the answer, won't go, but Sinano gets the rebound, blocked by Smith. A little bit too much excitement on the last pass. <laughs> Would have been really cool if Ava Learn was able to uh, slam it down, but Cassidy Harden will knock down the three. Petrie looking to spark some offense, gives it over to Jayla Smith, who nails the floater. Back in the game for the Golden Gophers. Crossing over on Petrie and swatted out of bounds by the long reach. And then it's to trying to get one more shot off before the quarter ends. 4.2 seconds to go. Battle inbounds. The shot is blocked by Learn, and with no seconds left. And that's a much needed three for Minnesota. Now let's see if they can force a miss or a turnover and try and close this gap even more. Petrie. Looks to answer, and she answers, and it won't go. David, we've seen an abundance of long twos from Minnesota as Cassidy Harden currently has it. Back over to Harden. Harden again. Heat check goes down for Harden. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time for our Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. All four of our Boilermaker professionals played yesterday. Andriana Keys playing in Poland. 22 points, five rebounds, six assists, played the entire 40 minutes in an 87 to 78 win for her team, which is now seven and six on the season. KK Hauser playing in Spain had 16 points, eight rebounds, and four assists, but her team lost 72 to 60. They're now six and 12 on the season. Aya Traore playing in a different league in Spain had 17 points and eight rebounds in a 67 57 win. Her team is 11 and four. And Sam Ostarello in Italy, three points and five rebounds, a 61-56 win. They are now 10-7 and seven on the season. Uh, talking with Caitlin Harper, our graduate uh, student from uh, Heartland, Wisconsin, getting a master's in accounting from the yep. Cranert School. Uh, what can you do with a master's in accounting? What will you do when your basketball days are done? You know, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> and mom and dad are listening, so yeah. they need an answer on this. Yep. That's what we're working on right now, um, you know, but I kind of want to do something around sports just because I love, you know, the game of basketball, but also just being around sports in general um, and kind of incorporating that with business and accounting and finance and those type of things. So something in that area. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Uh, I asked you about the transition going from Heartland, Wisconsin, out to Riverside, California. What was it like going from the Western Athletic Conference and now playing in the Big Ten? It's definitely different for sure. Um, you know, everyone's just bigger, faster, stronger. Um, but I think having those four years of playing Division One basketball anywhere is helpful. 
um, and you kind of feel like you can hold your own a little bit more than, you know, just showing up here. Um, but yeah, it's definitely been a, a good change for me. You're not the only Harper playing basketball sibling in your family. Your younger sister is a freshman now at Grand Canyon. Yep. Uh, what advice have you been able to give to her as she's navigating her way through her freshman year? Yeah, it's kind of, it's fun watching like someone in your family kind of go through, you know, what you went through. And even at Grand Canyon, she's playing in the same conference I did. So she's going to the same places. Um, she just played at my old school this week. So, you know, seeing her kind of, like blossom into her own person um, and her own player has been really fun for me to watch um, and just seeing her on the court. But I mean, your freshman year always has ups and downs and me being, having been gone through that, you know, going to California as far, Phoenix is basically just as far. And so any advice and help that I can give her um, and just that she knows that we all support her. Back in the old days, they would tell a post player, now here is the basket. You stand about five feet from this and don't leave. Basketball has evolved, and we've seen you become, or, or shoot this year, about 45-plus percent from three-point range. Where did that outside shot come from? Yeah, you know, I think it came from my dad, actually. Um, you know, growing up, we, me and my sister both were sometimes kind of told, you know, you're tall, stand on the block type of thing. And, you know, he just said, you never know when you're going to need that shot. You might as well, you know, work on it and get better. And so me and my sister both have kind of developed that three-point shot, um, and it's proving to be helpful. And, and it's, you know, you know how hard it is to defend a three-point shooter because you got to go mm -hmm. out and, and get out in traffic. And, and, and sometimes it looks like when I look at the players who are guarding you, they seem shocked at times that you take that shot and make it. You mm -hmm. took one the other day. Did you realize you were about four or five feet behind the three-point line no. in the shot you made? I, I kind of thought you might have might have lost where the line was, but you made the shot, so it all worked out pretty well. Yeah, we'll say it worked out. We'll say it worked <laughs> out. We'll, you know, that's one of those don't, 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 no, oh, that's a great shot. Right? <laughs> all right, uh, just a couple of minutes left here. Uh, let's talk about this season coming up. You're, you're halfway through the Big Ten now. Uh, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the time of the season where it gets a little, you get to the grind. Uh, you know, as, as a high school player, the, your season is just about ending now. They're going into mm -hmm. tournament play, but you've got half a Big Ten season to play. How do you feel physically at this point in the season? You know, pretty good. I think we do a good job of recovering our bodies, getting the treatment that we need, um, and kind of, you know, we work in the weight room to kind of do the load management type of thing. And so I think, you know, we're all feeling pretty good. Um, yeah. What's your favorite spot on campus besides Mackey Arena? Is there a place that you, when you want to get away from everything, that you can go and kind of find a little bit of respite? Um, you know, I would have to say Copper Moon because some of our team has a coffee addiction, and so we tend to all go get coffee well, together. When you say some of our <laughs> team, is that present company included? Possibly. Possibly, yeah. I see a lot, I see a lot of co coffee cups on the bus all the time. Yeah. So I guess they're all, Katie's smiling, they're all caffeinated. That's a good thing. You want to have yeah. a little bit of energy. Well, we're thrilled that you decided to make the trip back home to uh, the Midwest and have a great uh, rest of the season, and we look forward to seeing you uh, play deep into the month of March. Yeah, thank you. All right, Caitlin Harper joining us. We'll have the head coach after this. It's the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union and the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. We boil them determination and you know you can just see I mean, she has a swagger about her that is so attractive to these kids nowadays and the recruiting and the style she's a competitor um, and she still has games she wears cool shoes you know she's just she's in the recruiting class that she's bringing in she's continuing to build and um, and those kids play with that you see them play with that competitive spirit and and that's and she coaches that way and and they're, they're just a, re a reflection of who she what she embodies every day. And, um, and it's, you know, I'm grateful that, that she's in that position leading this team. And, uh, and um, it's, it's showing, it's paying off. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open, got him! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales, holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope for years! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. 
For nearly a century, ross Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about them Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Halftime in Columbus, 43-34 Iowa is leading Ohio State. Hawkeyes playing tonight without McKenna Warnock, who is a player who really hurt us in the game there in December. So it'll be interesting to see if the Hawkeyes can hold on. Let's talk about your next opponent. I think it's safe to say that Illinois has been not only the surprise of the Big Ten, but maybe one of the biggest surprises in the country. A team that uh, historically has not been successful in women's basketball is all of a sudden 16 and four heading into this week. Yeah, they've uh, they've done. You know, I think everybody was their non-conference schedules like, okay, who are they playing? Who are they playing? And then they get to the Big Ten and they just keep winning. They knock off Iowa at home. Um, I think well, they they went to Indiana close game. Yep. Indiana got yep. them, and then it's like okay, you know here, they're they're legit. Their 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 guards can flat out go. Um, Cook and Bryant's. You add in McKenzie, and then um, Bostic rebounds everything. Yep. Shoop stretches the defense at the four. Um, yeah, they've been. Yeah, their, their guards can just flat out get buckets. They had a 17-point lead at Ohio State in the second half before the Buckeyes came back. So I think we found that that team is for real. And, you know, we looked at how Minnesota's trying to do things. We talked about this last week, trying to build through youth and, and come up. Mm -hmm. uh, new coach at, at, uh, at Illinois, they bring in a couple of players from her place, Dayton. They bring in another player from North Carolina State. And all of a sudden, bang, you got yeah. a different basketball team. Yeah. Um you know, you know, Illinois was – they needed a change, and, and Shauna has come in and, um, you know, just, it, you know, relit that entire program. And um, Cook and, and Shoup coming from Dayton with her, we're familiar with her, and then you had Bryant from the NC State transfer. I mean, it, I don't know that there's a better – a better one-two punch for in the backcourt than, than um, Genesis Bryant McKeer Cook. Well, we know that Illinois can put the ball in the basket, and we definitely know Ohio State can put it in the basket. You're going to see them on Sunday. But the other thing that the uh, Buckeyes do that can really cause you problems is they'll, they'll full-court press you, and they'll try to get a lot of points off their defense. Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm going to knock on wood. I, I, the, the press usually slows us down, but I don't feel like we usually turn it over. Um, I, I trust the ball with Janae and Madison's hands, and um, Jayla's starting to be a really good job of making smart decisions. Um, I think we'll, we'll have a, an okay time breaking, and now we got to make shots. I think last year when they pressed us um, in the first quarter, we, we, we didn't have an issue, and then we just couldn't make an open shot. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, knocking on wood here, it, hopefully it doesn't happen. But, uh, yeah, not, nothing that really that, – that doesn't really stress us, stress us out too much. You know, I think the one surprising thing about Ohio State, when J.C. Sheldon went down with her injury, and she hasn't played since November, you thought, well, that's going to be – that's going to take them down a notch. They're just kind of sailing along without her. Yeah, and then they lost uh, the other kid to a knee injury. Um, uh, Madison Green. Yeah, Madison Green. Yep. And, uh, yeah, you take J.C. Sheldon off your team. Wow. Um, but – Rumor has it she's close to coming yeah. back, hopefully um, another week away. Play about uh, Monday would be <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, Monday, Monday would be Monday, a great day for JC, her return. JC, if you're listening, Monday, <laughs> you're not listening now, but maybe if you ever hear, like, Monday sounds like a really good time for you to come back. And, you know, speaking of interesting, it is going to be an interesting time to play them because they're playing tonight at home uh, against uh, Iowa, and right now they're trailing by nine at the half. Thursday night they have to go to Indiana. Mm. So you don't know, are they going to be way high? Are they going to be way low? It's three games in seven days, and it's two really difficult games before they play you. Yeah, um, obviously, there, there's a, like we're kind of in that stretch, too, where we're at Illinois, at Ohio State. Right. Then we play Indiana at home. So there's always this like really tough stretch for, for every program. Um, and honestly, in our league, man, it's like no night off. you got to make sure you're on it every night. Um, so hopefully they're just exhausted, flat out, so tired. Um, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll give it our best shot. All right, final segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union is coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. 
recovers that near steal from Sam Hybe. Harden from deep. She sinks it. Harper with a shot from deep. She gets it. Isabel Bourne with the inbound. Sam Hybe nearly clipped by Cassidy Harden. A fast break that doesn't connect. Maddie Crow going to get an offensive foul. Three to shoot. Ellis from three. She connects. Abby Ellis. Pass out to Hybe. That ball gets pushed in, and now Abby Ellis working on transition. Ava Learn with the fast break points. Three ball has not been too kind to the Huskers today. They're three for 13 now. Jayla Smith outside the arc. She connects. She's played fantastic defense. Another thing, you go back and watch the tape against Northwestern. Not only did she have 24 points and perfect 7 for 7 from the free throw line, she was making the tough defensive play. She took the charges in the paint. She was guarding them close outside the arc. Jayla Smith gets the fresh 20. Abby Ellis, she's hot! Under a minute left in this third quarter. Kicked out to Harden. She's going deep and sinks it. Shot clock at nine. Terry kicks it out to the shoulder. Smith driving in herself. Will put up a floater and get it off the star. She'll do a step back. Holds up. Back to Terry. 40 seconds on the clock. Terry from deep. Drills it. Boilers back within a possession. Show on 95.3 Bob FM. It's time for this week's game plan presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at purduefed.com. So you've got two difficult games on the road against two teams that can really score a lot. I think the big, one of the biggest keys is to try to avoid those big stretches. You know that teams are going to make runs, they're going to have their spurts, but you've got to minimize the damage when you're on the road. Yeah, we actually talked about that in the office a little bit. We, we gave our kids yesterday off and, and today as well. Um, just like our two-day prep and this time of the year, any, anytime you can get some extra rest, it's, it's good for you. But we talked about just, you know, sustaining our, 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 our head basically when teams go on runs. And because Illinois is going to go on runs, they can flat out score the ball. And we've got to just make sure that, you know, we're, 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 we, we stay solid because um, you don't want to, you know, an eight-point run turn into a 17-point deficit. So, um, yeah, both teams can can score it, and you know, hopefully, we're scoring it well those nights too. Keeping your eye on the prize, it's it's no secret that one of the goals for this team is to try to get back in the NCAA tournament. Coming into today, you're number 46 in the net rankings, which is a big uh, part of what they do in terms of uh, trying to determine who's going to be in the field. You get a win this week, that number is going to go in the right direction quickly. Yeah, um, just big opportunities for our ball club. Obviously, we we last we you know we were just talking during the break a, a couple that that we probably should have gotten that that put us in this situation, but um, just a big opportunity for us to to kind of sneak back up there in the net. Um, I'm, I'm not so sure. I can't remember how far it went down last year, but uh, you get you get one or, or two of these. Um, you know, we, we're just talking one, but man, I'll take two in a second, right? Like we, we're gonna we're gonna fight for two, but uh, right now it's just one and zero, oh, and, and that game is with Illinois. See you Thursday night, Champagne. Thanks, Tim. All right, thanks to Caitlin Harper for coming in, a West Scott, our engineer, Roger Forsyth, our producer, and Hunter Massingill providing our video. Boilermakers and Fighting Illini will have it at 7:45 on Thursday night with the tip-off starting at eight. For everyone here at Walk-Ons, this is Tim Newton. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. <laughs>